Hello and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone and welcome to part 17 of Learning Piece by Piece, the complete beginner's guide to working with Motion 5. If you are a first time visitor to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell so that you'll be updated when future videos in the series are uploaded. Also, if you are brand new to Motion, then I would suggest that you go back to some of the earlier tutorials so that you can catch up with where we are now in the series. Okay, today we're going to continue our look at the uh, behaviors and we're going to look at the quantized behavior and how using this behavior can save you time and effort and also create some really subtle effects to the projects that you're doing. So let's go ahead and have a look at a simple little project. But what is the quantized behavior? Well, it simply creates an incremental animation in any keyframe or behavior influence parameter. In other words, it changes a smooth animation to a series of steps or jumps rather than just it being a fluid movement. And there are a couple of um, ways you can control the steps in the behavior controls. So let's have a look at what we've got. Well, we've got a little bubble here which we've scaled and keyframed on the scale from 0 to 30% of its value. And basically that just gives us a very smooth animation in on the parameter of scale. So what we're going to do now is click on the arrow, go to add parameter behavior quantize. And if we play that now you'll see nothing actually happens. And that's because the step size is set to 1000 and we only have 30% to play with. So let's set that now to 5% and you should find that we have six steps. Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, we got six steps there um, as the bubble animated in. So let's just check that one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. And five percent, that's because five percent of 30% is six. If we now adjust that and make it 2.5%, then it should double the amount of steps that you have, and it will come in a little quicker. And there you go, it's just clearly doubled the amount of steps that you have. Set it to 30%, because it's set to 30% on scale, it'll just come in once. Any more than that, and it won't come in at all. Okay, so let's have a look at this little um, thing that we have here, this little logo. If you go, to, I got the ornament from the content drawings, ornament 28, and just dragged it into the group. I then made other groups for a circle and for the logo. So for the um, ornament, I just keyframed at 0%, and I just moved it down a little bit on Y, so that it um, moves smoothly from the center to the bottom of the... Um, for the um, circle, which has an outline and a fill, I just um, keyframe that on scale, and then I keyframe the logo on scale and opacity, um, and it just produces that very smooth little um, animation. It's nothing startling, nothing you'd write home about, but it's just a very simple little animation that anybody can create. Now let's see if we add some um, quantized behavior to this, if we can't change it a little bit. We'll see how little subtle movements can help. Now I'm not going to do anything to the logo, but we look at the circle, and what we're going to do is because it's the animated parameter scale, that's the one we have to use, click the arrow, add parameter behavior, quantize, and now we will set the step size to 20%. Because it's scaled to 100, that'll give us five steps over the duration um, of the animation. So set it to 20, so let's have a look at what we've got. And it gives you that little subtle flickering um, effect which is different to what you would normally expect to see. And then on the ornament, what we're going to do, again, we're going to add parameter behavior quantize to the position Y. And this time we're going to set the step size because we want it to be very subtle to 75. And that should give us probably two 
um, steps as that animates it. And yeah, there you go. And it just changes it a little bit um, by giving it those two steps. Now to animate it out, um, what I'm going to do is again qu use quantize. But first, I'm going to go to basic motion and add a motion path to the group. And uh, I'll just, wherever it is, 141 frames, that's its in point. We press I on the keyboard. And then we're just going to drag the motion path to where we want it on the screen. And we're going to add a few points and just move these points around until we've got the motion path to be something what we want it to be. Each motion path will create a different effect for you when you add the quantized behavior. So I want this to last about 80 or 90 frames, two and a half seconds is probably about right as it goes out. So we'll set it to 221 frames at the end, press O on the keyboard to set the out point. And then we just got a simple motion path, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm actually looking for is to glitch it. So in order to do that, I'm going to add a quantize behavior. Again, go to parameter, quantize, and we'll set its in point, press I on the keyboard, and we'll set its out point by pressing O on the keyboard. And now we've got our motion path and our quantize. So we need to set that, and we want the steps to be quite big. First of all, we'll set it to apply it to transform position X and Y, and to the step size, we'll make that 645. Now what I've got was really messed up my motion path, and it seems to jump from place to place, um, which is a very simple way to create that kind of jump, quantum jump type thing. Um, and so now we've achieved the effect that we want. What we want to do is just make it more look like more of a glitch. So we'll go to Stylize, and we'll add Bad TV to that. And then what we will do, we'll set the waviness to 180, perhaps. We'll set the roll to minus 50 and the static to 0.7. And then we will press I to find the in point and we will find, go forward about three frames. So I'll just um, zoom in on this and then we'll set the O point at three frames. So now what we've created is that little glitch effect as it moves across. Now we're going to duplicate each one and find the points at which it moves and add the bad TV duplicate to those places. Go back to the first one and we're going to add a prism blur and we'll set the angle of that to 12, set the amount to 42, it's really up to you how much you want. I'm going to set the in point um, by pressing I on the keyboard and then find the out point at the end of the bad TV. One more frame, one less frame I think and press O on the keyboard and now duplicate that three times and place the duplicates in the same place as the other bad TVs. And we've created now that simple glitch effect. It's a very effective glitch effect just by using a quantized behavior and nothing else. And it's, it's a very, very simple thing to do. And so I hope this has given you a better understanding of what the quantized behavior actually does. Um, and in part two of this, if you join us in part two, we're going to be looking at some other projects which you can use the quantized behavior and how you can apply those in Final Cut Pro. So if you all if you like the video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you'll be updated when part two is uploaded. And all that remains for me to say now is see you in the next video.